Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of retro video game music, exploring the world of Secret of Mana. The composer for this song, at least, possibly the whole game though, is Hiroki Kikuda, and we're going to be checking out the song Meridian Dance. Now, I don't know much about this series other than the fact that I played the first one, which was titled Final Fantasy Adventure in the U.S. The game started off as a Final Fantasy spin-off, as this was explained to me just a couple days ago on the Discord. Um, and uh, this is the second game in the series, taking on the name change of Blank of Mana. So, other than that, I don't really have a lot of knowledge about this, so let's just dive straight in and see what Hiroki Kakuda is bringing to the table today. Massive build-up. Oh. Into that really slick groove, fantastic bass work. <laughs> so that section was wild really tough to figure out the time signature but i think it's still 4-4 four four with the snare accent on uh, the seven beat out of a two-bar phrase still has driving but has a bit more adventurous feel to the melody Love the bass taking lead here. So many little flourishy ideas. Very cool. Kind of reminds me of something Rush would do. Anybody else get that vibe? So there's our loop then. Yeah, this is just driving. The strings over here and the bass are both presenting more of that danger, the intensity of the battle. The synth over here though is just, it's pure adventure. So it is 4-4 four, four, and the snare is alternating on 3 and 4, so that's a fun section. The synth over here is just a single note. A little bit of mystery, some intrigue. Primarily coming from the bass and flute there. Such a wonderful ending. I'm not a fan of the loop though. So yeah, we have a, a pretty tight like minute 45 second uh, song there. We go through a few different ideas, all of it sort of uh, residing within the realm of adventure. I think that's the main vibe. The adventure is paired with other sounds. We do have mystery, we have intrigue, we have danger, 
Um, there is, uh, oh, what is that one? When everything kind of cuts back and the base takes over before we hit that uh, mysterious section, there's a bar or two in that area that it, it feels very proggy rush to me. It's, it's just fantastical, maybe might be the word I'm looking for there. But I love how all of this is usually accompanied by the right pan synth that tends to consistently bring the adventure to the mix. And so it, to me, makes the entire thing feel cohesive. We have this, this adventurous part over here, and oh, this is a... Um, you know, for example, this is a mysterious part of the adventure. We don't know what's going on here. Some creepy woods. Uh, then this is a dangerous part. We're in battle now. And then uh, this is like uh, motion and direction and momentum. This is just like crossing, you know, wide open lands, trying to get to the next city or something like that. And so it kind of, to me, showcases the variety of, of emotions one could have while going on this large RPG fantasy epic adventure while never losing that sort of fun adventurous element to it. It's actually a really cool idea to mix all this together because it allows the song to explore all of these different uh, feelings and atmospheres while while staying cohesive through the entire thing. There's still that one piece of it of writing over here on the synth that no matter what is always going to be this glue that holds everything together it's going to be the reminder hey this is all happening on a journey and i think that's a great way to go about doing it now i gotta bring this up because i feel like i've brought it up so many times already uh geez, this is super nes right which is the third time this uh, console has been brought up this week. We started off with, uh, what did we start off with on Monday? Oh, Legend of Zelda. And then, of course, yesterday we checked out Donkey Kong Country 2. So, third time Super Nintendo has been present. And the third time the soundtrack, the sound tones blows me away. I don't want to go on to this too much because I feel like I've brought it up in every video so far but growing up I had the Genesis and that's my idea of 16-bit music and the more that I discover of what was possible with the Super NES's sound chip the more in awe I am of it it's wild to think that it was out at the same time as the Genesis and they're not even in the same camp granted I still have more of a nostalgic part for the Genesis sound but Nintendo was uh they were definitely ahead of the game tech-wise here, and I think songs like this um, showcase more of that depth. Once again, I can hear strings, I can hear flutes, I can hear a bass guitar. They're not perfect, and they certainly would never be confused for uh, acoustic versions of the instruments, but they sound a lot better than I would ever expect for the 90s, early 90s probably when this game came out. Do I have a date for this? No, I do not. Um, but I mean, we checked out Donkey Kong Country yesterday, that was 1995, and it's probably around that same time, a few years before, a few years after, somewhere in that area. So, yeah, I mean, I would never, I don't think... Maybe there is some obscure Genesis game with a soundtrack that has stuff like this, where I'd be like, yeah, that's definitely mimicking this real instrument. But for the most part, the Genesis to me is a synthesizer sound chip. I listen to it, oh my god, these are all synthy sounds. I can kind of see what they might be attempting to emulate, but they don't really cross that hurdle of reaching a point of emulating it well for the time. Um, and so, you know, I listen to this and it just, it just never hits me that this is such an old, uh, song on such old hardware. And as usual, I think it fits really well with the RPG vibe, with the fantasy vibe, um, and going on a large epic journey. It captures a lot of the orchestral feelings, which I associate with this genre so much. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty awesome. 
I do really like one major thing in here. So we kick it off and we have the synth and we have the strings and we have some flute and we have the bass guitar and the drums and all this. And it's all rather straightforward for a while. And then we pull, we pull the energy back. We bring in some flutes as a prominent instrument. We bring in some counterpoint, um, some cool stuff. And then the bass takes lead and it directs us through where the bass has primarily been doing root tones and some light uh, chord outlining up to this point. It now takes a lead role and plays melody linear melody and it just sounds so good especially since i kind of view it as the lead but i don't think it's the only melody there we do have some counterpoint going on and i'm a huge fan of counterpoint i'm a huge fan of bass lead this is just a, a treat for my ears i love it um it is a really great section i'm glad that uh it's not a one-off that we continue to come back to it which uh i guess segues into my final thoughts here, which is this, the, the loop, coming back to ideas, it just isn't a really strong loop. I don't know what went on here. I don't want to say something led to this decision because I don't have insight into the entire composition process, but it feels like the composer wrote the, the song itself and then some developer said oh this is our loop and then set the game to loop it over and over the ending feels final there is a really cool um we reach a peak we bring the intensity down so we're we're wrapping things up as far as emotion goes and then we go into the harmonic device and we have a really clean resolution in it the song slows down chills down <laughs> and resolves and then without any sort of break i think even just two to four beats of silence would do wonders for it but without any stop at all we go from the last held out chord back to the driving energy at the beginning even some sort of intro a lead back into the energy would have been better than what what, what we ended up getting I think that really is the worst part about it. And it's difficult to, I think it's difficult to criticize it from any perspective here because it really depends on how you view this. Is the single loop of it, the 90-ish minutes of the song, what I should be looking at from a compositional standpoint? Yes. I think that is really effective. I love it as a short song. We have a beginning, we have rising intensity, we have some contrast, we hit a new peak, and then we wrap it up. It is really well paced, albeit a bit fast, I think, but it does the job well for what it is, which is a video game song. But on the flip side, it is a video game song, and part of that is the loop, the repetition of it, and I don't think that is as strong. It's jarring to me. And I think having to listen to this over and over and over and over would make that jarring thing stand out more, as repetition tends to do. It showcases and highlights the weak points. So, like I said, it's tough, I think, to criticize this, especially when I don't know what went into it, what the creation process was, but I do think that that is certainly the weakest part of listening to this right here, this three and a half minute uh, grouping of it. And hearing that repetition twice, that loop between the end and the beginning, it just never quite clicks for me. However, when I was looking for the uh, the video to play so you all could hear it and, and see a cool little thing up there, I did see that this game got remade, as did the soundtrack. I'm kind of curious if that changes anything up, and I might do that on my own time just to see how it compares to this one. I'm going to assume that it is probably not restricted by any sort of uh, hardware or sound chips, and it's probably an MP3 file, probably of an orchestral rendering uh, arrangement of this. A rendering? <laughs> probably an orchestral arrangement of this. But I'm curious if they did any uh, arrangements to the composition, any cleaning up of that, or if they just played exactly what was here but expanded it out, maybe to more instruments, maybe just to the same instruments, but played live. Um, 
Is there anything else here? Yeah, I don't think so. Just fantastic melody writing, great dual harmony writing, constantly getting the adventurous harmony with something else, the mystery, the intrigue, the terror, the danger, the, the battle, the all of it. Um, bass led section and again there's still parts in, in here that I could see Rush playing too so I'm kind of curious if that was just a coincidence maybe um, Hiroki Kakuda and Rush both have similar inspirations that they both drew from or it's also possible I suppose that Hiroki Kakuda was inspired by Rush and some of the ideas here too while it is generally this fantastical uh, orchestral arrangement we do have that that bass guitar in here and we do have the drums in here that kind of push away from a, a more traditional classical vibe and aim for something that is rock adjacent at least from our rhythm section so that's pretty cool and like I said I'm curious where that inspiration comes from Without lyrics, we're just going to wrap this one up. Those are my thoughts on Hiroki Kakuda's Meridian Dance from Secret of Mana. What did you think of this track? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe you just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives about it. Put all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. We do have a special selection coming up next. It is Stephen Wilson adjacent. If you're interested in that, stick around for it. Otherwise, we'll wrap it up tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. We're going to listen to our final track for Retro Video Game Music Week. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.